this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is a video to compare two fantastic 60% gaming keyboards, the Corsair K70 Pro Mini Wireless and the Steel Series Apex Pro Mini Wireless. Two wireless pro level keyboards with very different specs and very different features and very different things of interest. And in this video, I'm going to be comparing the two keyboards side by side. I'm talking about the various features and specs and things that make them interesting, the things that make them stand apart. They are both fantastic keyboards if you're into 60% keyboards, and they're interesting for different reasons, very different reasons. And I'll leave all the specs and links to the full reviews in the description so you can find out more about what they're like and see close-up details of a lot more depth in the reviews. But here I want to talk to you about the various different things of highlight. And you'll notice some significant differences between the two. For example, the K70 has much more obvious lettering. It also has a lot of extra secondary actions buried in the function key. So if you press the FN key, you can get access to other keys. And out of the box, it perhaps is the better looking of the two. The SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini is quite understated by comparison. And yet, the hidden features of that keyboard are all underneath and there are a lot of interesting highlights to these. Now these are both wireless and Bluetooth keyboards, both capable of both of those things and you'll get more battery life out of them when you use them in Bluetooth mode than you will in the 2.4 gigahertz and that's worth keeping in mind because what you'll see if you look at the specs difference is that you can get about 200 hours of battery life out of the Corsair keyboard or 32 hours with the RGB turned on. But a lot of these things are judged on Bluetooth lighting. So for example, the SteelSeries keyboard can get up to 30 hours wireless or 40 hours with Bluetooth and that's with the lighting turned on. Now you can see from various angles, they're quite comparable in terms of the shape, the slope of them, the size of the frame, the design, the overall look and feel in various different ways. However, as I will show, the K70 is a bit more striking externally and in terms of the visuals it offers in terms of RGB lighting and such. And there are some other highlights. For example, you can see that the escape key has been replaced with a Corsair logo and also the space bar has this weird funky accent panel on it. And you'll see that there are a number of other things of interest. Both keyboards have USB-C charging and both have a standard bottom rollout so you can swap out the keycaps. More on that later on. Now taking off the keycaps you'll see on the underside the more interesting things about these two. You'll notice that the Corsair for example uses Cherry MX RGB red switches as standard with 45 grams of actuation force, 2 mil actuation, 4 mil travel. You can also get Cherry MX Speed Silver as another option which actuate at 1.2 millimeters. The SteelSeries Apex Pro, however, is more interesting in this department because it uses optical switches. More on that in a minute, but keep in mind that point because there's a lot of hidden features to the SteelSeries keyboard, which makes it more powerful in theory. Meanwhile, the Corsair K70 Pro Mini Wireless has removable key switches. So yes, you get a choice of two different Cherry MX switches, but you can also use the included keycap and key switch puller tools that are included in the box to remove all the switches. They're hot swappable, which means you can remove them without any soldering, and then you can buy your own switches and swap them out. Now this is a fantastic move from Corsair and a really interesting highlight to the keyboard. It's the first one they've done with hot swappable switches and it's a real rarity from any of the big brands. I haven't seen very many others do it apart from NZXT at the moment. Razer and SteelSeries don't have hot swappable keyboards, for example. You can get other ones from other brands, but the main gaming brands don't tend to have them. So this is a nice move. They are, however, just three pin and it's worth keeping that in mind because you will find there are a lot of five pin switches out there and some of the better switches are five pin. This is one of the big differences between the two keyboards though, as obviously the Steel Series keyboard does not have swappable switches, but you can see that I've got Gatron yellows here, for example, and you could theoretically swap out the keyboard, lube up the key switches, 
and make it sound a lot nicer. Now the Steel Series wins because it has optical switches. So these are Omnipoint adjustable switches, which means that you can adjust the level of actuation on a per key basis, which is insane, all the way from 0.2 millimeters to 3.8 millimeters with 37 levels of programmability. And that makes it the fastest responding keyboard in the world in theory with a 0.54 millisecond response time in that setup which is nuts now the k70 shouldn't be overlooked though because it does have some specs which also make it pretty fantastic it has 8000 hertz hyperpoling 4000 hertz key scanning and it has 20 layers of rgb lighting and 50 onboard profiles as well so you can customize all sorts of things with this keyboard. As I said already from various angles, you will see that there are a number of different hidden layers of actions within the other keys. Press the function key and you get access to those. You can see around WASD, for example, that you can do button presses on your mouse using this, which is pretty nuts. It also has on the fly macro recording and a number of other highlights to it. And you can obviously customize that within Corsair's IQ software and change things as well. Now the same can be said for the Steel Series keyboard naturally. Both keyboards have a lot of programmability in their own software and you can customize all sorts of things. But you do have the option to customize the actuation on the Steel Series, and that's really important to bear in mind. And I went in a lot more depth on this in the review, so be sure to check that out. But basically you can customize the actuation point as in where the key press happens for every key on the keyboard and then set them to react fast. And you can also set two layers of actuation and then a different action for each of those, which is pretty nuts. It's a very different affair. Whereas the Corsair out of the box seems a bit more sort of standard with its key switch set up and perhaps not as appealing when you look at it like that. However, one of the things, and this is one of the reasons I'm comparing these two keyboards that I found, and as you'll hear at the end, is that when typing on both these keyboards, they actually sound very similar. Now the Steel Series keyboard is more expensive. It is a very premium keyboard with a price to match. However, they both sound very comparable in terms of the sound that they put out. And I'll let you judge that at the end for yourselves. But what I thought was that despite the fact that that has optical switches and the Corsair doesn't, they sound very similar. And I think that speaks to what Corsair has done with the design of their keyboard the way the keys are stabilized and the overall design of it is a very nice keyboard and it also looks fantastic as you can see from various angles it has an rgb lighting bar that runs around the outside and the edge of it and some nice rgb bleed now i did a video to compare this with the corsair k65 rgb mini and i thought the rgb lighting on that keyboard was a lot nicer actually because they had a white back plate where the keycaps sit and it would let the RGB shine through. You don't see that quite as much here, but I do think the lettering and the edging of it is a bit nicer. So you can see the lettering on the keycaps a bit nicer than you can on the Steel Series, as you will have seen already. So it's a little bit nicer out of the box to look at. It's easier to see the various actions and other things, but both keyboards are interesting for different reasons. Now both have 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection for a solid connection to your PC. But with the hyperpoling and 4000 Hz key scanning, Corsair promises a really fast response and fast low latency connection to your PC. Whereas SteelSeries obviously has low latency as well, but it delivers that via the fast actuation in there, as well as Quantum 2.0 wireless, which uses some clever technology to scan and make sure it's using a clean frequency. But as you can see out of the box, it's not as snazzy. But one of the benefits of both these keyboards is that you can swap out the keycaps. So you can see the SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini here, for example, with SteelSeries Prism keycaps. These are pudding keycaps, and you can see that they let through a lot more light and result in a much nicer look and feel to it. You can see a much better look here in a slightly more dark room. And the other thing you'll notice is when you press the Steel Series key, you'll see the color changes. And what this is actually highlighting is the other layer, so the meta layer, which is where there are other key presses hidden in other keycaps. So you can press that button and get access to a lot of other keys. So quite a few differences here, as you can see. And you'll see a styling on the Corsair one that looks really nice and that from various different angles. 
but they're also both fantastic under the hood for different reasons as well. And like the SteelSeries keyboard, the Corsair can be customized with different keycaps to add some style to it. You can see me adding a couple in here. I'll add links to in the description so you can find out more about them, but quite a lot of variety. And which of these keyboards do I prefer? That's really tough, I'll be honest. I like the customization of the Corsair, but obviously the Steel Series has a lot going for it in terms of the programmability of each and every key, and the optical switches are absolutely fantastic. Stick around now to hear a sound test and then check out the reviews linked in the description to find out more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.